Hi everyone. Today we have the privilege of speaking with Ms. Evan Daglen, a member of the German Parliament. She is a strong advocate for the Free Assange movement and has been actively involved in anti-war protests. Our conversation will focus on the need for peace in Ukraine, the U.S. provocations surrounding Taiwan, and the different perspectives on human rights between China and the Western countries. Let's get started. How does the reality here in China you see compared with what you read on Western media? They criticize China's human rights situations, but China has a, a different view on human rights. China says we have lifted almost everyone out of poverty. It's like eight hundred million people. And how do you see China's poverty alleviation? I do think that we have、uh, different approaches, different cultures, and different traditions. I do think that、uh, mostly it's a lack of knowledgement about China. That's why I am in favor of traveling to China to see China, to talk with the Chinese, and、uh, to learn how it is in China, and so on. And human rights. I do believe human rights you cannot export via weapons. I do believe that we have to talk about social human rights as well in China. You、uh, overcame、uh, poverty, and、uh, for more than 800 million people,、um, your human rights are more for food, for health, for education, for social welfare. Our model of、uh, human rights is more in the liberal way. And the other thing is, you know, you have、um, at least 3,000 years old culture and tradition. And you have a different approach to this, right? And three thousand years age of culture, the human rights concept is how old it is? Two hundred, three hundred years old,、uh, and it's it's a beautiful thing, you know, freedom of expression, freedom of press, and everything. But three hundred years old culture, comparing with three thousand years old culture,、uh, you cannot say.、Uh, Ours is better than yours. How do you see China's Communist Party? I do think we we have a big lack of information about China and the Chinese、uh, Communist Party as well. Unfortunately, in Germany, the debates about China is more like、uh, well, I don't know a lot of China, but I have to say this on China. So they don't know something, but they have a opinion on China. Is it fact-minded? No, it has no facts on the ground for this opinion, but they have an opinion on、uh, on China. This is a big imbalance of the discussions in Germany. You you mentioned the China-Germany relations have met some challenges. What are the challenges you talked about? We have a very crucial moment in May 2023. We have first the G7 summit in、uh, Japan in Hiroshima. And the communique of the G7 summit is very aggressive. Aggressive announcement regarding、uh, China. It's, it's、uh, crucial that the European Commission now proposed an 11th package on sanctions、uh, towards Russia, which includes sanctions against Chinese companies. It's a big shift because these sanctions are extraterritorial sanctions, and these are. Against international law, in the past, Germany and the European Union hims,、uh, itself always condemned the sanctions, the extraterritorial sanctions done by、uh, former U.S. President Donald Trump、uh, towards Iran. They condemned it as an act against public international law. So this would be an act against public international law as well. So if this proposal is finalized. By the European Union member states, it,、uh, from my perspective,、uh, will be the beginning of a warfare, and and this will have heavy implications, heavy impacts on the German economy. You mentioned the sanction against Chinese companies, but their claim is China is providing military aid to Russia, but they provide no evidence. Why do we keep seeing those groundless accusations keep coming up? Well, I think we、uh, we are facing at the moment a very anti-Chinese hysteria in the West. What is caused also by a big influence by transatlantic networks and the U.S. 
And it becomes more and more that uh, the US is forcing European Union uh, to take a side on their battle with China. China is the biggest trade partner of Germany. I am convinced that we have to represent our own interests. It cannot be an interest of the German uh, government to, uh, uh, to take side in this conflict between China and the United States, uh, which will have disadvantages for your own population. Why Germany cannot have its own independent foreign policy? Why it follows the US agenda? Do you think it's a, a benefit for German people? Well, it's a good question. Why uh, do we follow? Obviously, it's not good for us. The German government, uh, you know, is uh, taking measures, is part of a sanctioned regime uh, of an economic war, we have to say, against Russia, which bleeds us. We are bleeding because of the sanctions. Uh, the German economy falls down. The IVF, IWF is now saying the economy of Russia is rising, is increasing, and the economy of Germany is shrinking. So, I mean, uh, you, uh, you do not have to be a very uh, well-educated person to know that the sanctions are failing, uh, that it's a boomerang. Every four-year-old uh, child can know that it's a boomerang. You are, you know, cutting yourself, your knees and your uh, legs. We have skyrocketing prices in energy, in food. Germany also uh, gives weapons to Ukraine. So it started with protection vests. Now they are uh, discussing about uh, jets, about combat air jets, like the, not the tornadoes and the Eurofighters, but now uh, the F-16 to support Ukraine. So it's just insane what's going on. We have already a proxy war between NATO and Russia, and uh, Germany is part of this proxy war uh, instead of being part of an initiative to stop this war, to stop the killings, to stop the deaths, and to, to stop this destroyment of nature and uh, infrastructure in Ukraine. But do you believe NATO's aggression leads to the war? And I do think that the NATO East expansion is one of the reasons of uh, this war. It's not true to say that this war was not provoked. Of course, there were provocations. The expansion of the NATO to the borders of Russia, the sending of missiles close to the border of Russia. And now the North Atlantic Treaty Organization wants to go to the Indo-Pacific. So the Indo-Pacific is somewhere else than the, uh, in the North Atlantic. So what's the point? They want to open an office in Tokyo, in Japan. As far as I know, Japan is not in the Atlantic. It's somewhere else. So you can see there is a limitless expansion of the NATO. But the West seems not like the peace talk proposals. Why is they are not like welcome the China's peace talk? Even Wall Street said like China asked Ukraine to give its territory to Russia, debunked by the, the Ukrainian foreign minister said it's a lie by Western reports. The problem is that not every Western country is in favor of stopping the war. And uh, very lately, one influential, important senator Lindsey Graham was in Kiev visiting President Zelensky. He said that it's the best thing that happens that the Russians were killed. We have to go on with this war. We have a deindustrialization at the moment in Germany. That means for a long term, there will be profits and benefits for the United States companies uh, in the competition. It is in our own interest to stop the war in Europe and not to uh, bring it to more escalation via, via more sanctions and more heavy weapons, to an escalation what can bring us to a third world war with a nuclear power. This is the danger we are facing. Some people in the United States, they have to understand that it's not a danger they are facing.
because if it comes to such a nuclear inferno, it's Europe which will suffer, not the United States on the other side of the Atlantic. Let's move on China-U.S. relations. Yeah. So how do you evaluate the China-U.S. relations now? The rising tension between U.S. and China is um, giving uh, a polarization in the world. And this polarization can develop very fast to an escalation. And uh, the military buildup in the Indo-Pacific by the U.S., the armament of Taiwan, of their allies like Japan, South Korea and some others in the region against China, adapting or, how you say, implementing their own national security strategy in the countries of the region like Japan did. If you see all these developments, that it gives the impression that USA is preparing for a war against China. But on the one side, they, the U.S. say they want to talk with China, and not on the other side, I can give you an example. They, they said that the two militaries don't have a talk, they want to talk to Chinese uh, defense ministers. But on the other side, they just sanctioned the Chinese defense ministers. How can this talk continue? Well, I do think in the international politics, uh, you have always this situation that uh, sometimes the claim and the reality has a gap. That's a bad, of course, uh, because it's uh, destroying the, the atmosphere for truthful diplomacy, for credibility, for uh, good relations. I think it's, um, you have to be China, and we all have to be very uh, attentive. So that's why we have to look what are the actions so how do you see the U.S. manipulation of the Taiwan question? We have the one-China policy. Even the United States has the one-China policy. I don't understand what's, uh, what's the matter with uh, provoking and escalating with the visit of Pelosi, with the arming of uh, Taiwan, with the diplomatic traffic uh, visiting each other, because everyone in the world and the United Nations are accepting the one-China policy. So. I don't understand, and this is a dangerous situation. Therefore, we need more uh, dialogue between China and United States. And here, Europe and Germany can make a contribution. We can try to mediate more between China and, uh, and US and not take side on the side of the United States, because United States wants Europe in their back or in the front line in the, in the sanction policy against China, as they did against Russia. Now, they're pushing us into the fire against Russia with the sanctions and the weapons. Mm -hmm. yeah. yes. So the United States has over like 800 military bases across the world, and China has only one. And most of the U.S. military bases are surrounding China, yeah. but the U.S. call China a threat. Mm -hmm. You need the enemy you need a built uh, enemy, and that's why I do think um, they are always uh, making this propaganda. I think it's understandable on one way to be a hegemony for a so long time uh, and to see that this hegemony is shrinking and you're losing. And there is a multiple world order is rising at the moment with the BRICS, but I do think it's not necessarily that the rising of China and the global south can be the losing of the United States. You can have a cooperation and a win-win as well.